guys, I'm going to do a faux stone today. I'm going to, I'm going to do a faux sea sediment multicolored jasper. Um, and I decided to do that because I received a whole stash of Cernit alcohol inks and I've picked out the colors I want to use today. And you can kind of go mad with the colors on this stone. Um, there's so many different colours in it. Excuse this bottle, it got damaged in transit and spilled and looks a bit gnarly, but anyway. Let's start with the um, Cernit alcohol inks then, and I've got this Lagoon Blue, and I'm also gonna go with Turquoise, um, Violet, Magenta, Lime Green, Fire Red, and Yellow. And I've got seven equalish pieces of um, Cernit translucent clay just rolled up into little logs at the moment. This one's slightly bigger because I wanted a little bit more of the blue, but the rest are roughly the same. Not a big deal. Cut them however big you want. They're just, you know, about this big, not very big. Um, I would say equivalent to about a two ounce block if you put it all together. I've also got this Cernit gel and I'm going with the translucent. And you'll also need some mica powders. I'm going with gold and white pearl and some metal leaf in copper and silver. And I think that's everything. But first thing first, let me just make some room. So we don't need those right at this point. I'm going to put aside the yellow and the fire red and you'll see why in a second now so we've got five colors left and for each color I just want to take a little tiny bit and keep it separate from the rest of the log for each color like so just a little bit and the reason I'm doing that is, I'm just going to move these out of the way. The reason I'm doing that is because for each colour I want to add alcohol ink and actually mix the colour into it, but not a thorough mix. So for each piece I'm going to add two or three little drops, leave it to one side to dry. So that's the lagoon. Oops, and I'm knocking it over already. I'm going to do the same with the next colour. This is the turquoise. Yes, yeah, some of these bottles got damaged in transit and they're a bit... Oops. One, two, three drops of the turquoise. Rub it on there. Let it dry. And then the next one is the violet. Now, as you know, um, purple alcohol ink tends to fade quite a lot once it's baked. So I'm going to add more than I more than the others for this. I'm going to try and get somewhat close to a purple colour because it usually comes out a bit pinky. So I've added like five drops of the purple or the violet to that one. It's still going to fade, but, you know. And then the next one is the magenta. One, two, three. Give it a smear. And then the last one, a little tiny bit of green. This is a lime green. One, two, three, and that's that. And I'm going to do the same with these two that I put aside, but I'm completely using the whole log to colour these in. I haven't got much room. I feel like I'm squashed in. This camera is really bothering me. 
I'm going to have to rethink how I set it up, I think. It's kind of awkward. All right, so for the last two logs that were left over, you, you're not cutting any, any away from that. You're keeping it as the whole piece. And I'm putting a decent amount of colour on each of those. So I've got five drops on that one. Aren't these colours gorgeous? I absolutely love these colours. They're so vibrant. And wait till you see this baked. The pieces, the pieces look so vibrant with these inks. I've been playing around with them for the last few days. And um, I really like them. So if you're interested in getting some Cernit alcohol inks, you can do so from Blueberry Beads. I will leave a link as I'm making a mess with my alcohol inks. I will leave a link for that shop in my description. Clean up a little bit. This is messy business, guys. You know I like to get messy. And these inks are very pigmented. You can see even with the um, alcohol, it's not coming off straight away, but it does eventually. They're very pigmented, I love them. Anyway, so I'm leaving all those little pieces to dry. And then obviously we've got the rest of the logs left over and we're just gonna do chippy choppy with these and add the corresponding colors. So the, this one will go here with that um, lagoon blue. Now for this one, I want the chops to be fairly angular and not too small. So I'm kind of almost cutting like little triangular shapes, if that makes sense. They're not really, but they're more angular and I don't want them too small. So we're not cutting tiny chops chippy choppy we're you know keeping it fairly chunky chunky chippy choppy ccc all right so that's the first little batch and that's going to be um the lagoon and i'm just going to pour some on there give it a mix you can always go back and re-chop afterwards which is what i usually do just make sure it's all coated and that's that one so we've got the lagoon over here ready to dry out and all the rest of it I'll do one more on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera you don't need to see me do the same thing seven times so let's get another chunk and this will be the turquoise and again, fairly angular, large-ish pieces. So that's the turquoise. So grab my turquoise. And just dribble it over there like so. Give it a mix. Make sure all the pieces are coated. Don't worry about them sticking together too much at this point because I usually do go back in and give another little, a little chop. All right, so that's the turquoise. So I'm gonna go and do the rest off camera. So I've got these colors left and then I've also got this red and this yellow. We're gonna do something a bit different with those two two pieces but I'll show you obviously all right so I'm going to go and do the rest of this off camera and I'll be back all right these are all dry so this is the, the clump of chippy choppy and I've taken each of the um, other piece of clay and mixed in the, the color but not completely so it's just very roughly mixed and I'm just gonna roll that up into a little sausage as well and that's going to get chopped up. I'm going to have to go over here to do that because I'm running out of space. So again just some nice angular pieces and that's just going to get thrown in the mix with the other pile. I'm going to do the same thing with all the other colours. Just roll each one into a log, chippy chop it up and it's just going to go in the mix. 
like so. So I'm going to go and do the rest off camera and I'll be back but before I do that this is the fire red and the lemon that I mixed and these have been thoroughly mixed. I'm just going to make a little um, blend out of these so I'm just going to roll this into a little teardrop shape make some room somewhere <clears throat> same with the yellow one and I'm just going to make a blend out of these so just stick them together like that pass them through the pasta machine down this way fold colour to colour pass through fold colour to colour until you've got a nice blend so I'm going to go and do all the rest of this off camera so I'm making each of the rest of these colours into logs and then chippy chopping them up and this is going to be a blend and I'll be back I've got all my logs chopped up now so I've got the the coated pieces in each colour and then also the other pieces that were um, partially mixed with ink but not completely you can you can see almost like a little spirally pattern running through it not so much on that one but like this one look so you can see it's not completely mixed and I've done that for all the piles all the colours except for the red and the yellow and I've just made a blend and I'm just going to fold it colour to colour like this and pass it through the pasta machine this way to make a longer strip I won't go off camera for this and I'm going to take it down to a number six okay so there's your strip and all I'm going to do is roll it up into a bullseye cane so I'm keeping the yellow as the center so I'm starting from the yellow and rolling all the way up doesn't have to be perfect it's all going to get chopped up it's just to add a little bit of extra dimension so to speak in the final piece all right so roll up your little cane so it looks like that give it a quick roll give it a bit of a stretch and a pull we're just making a longish um, cane and then it's going to get chopped up and we don't want the pieces to be too big so you know I don't even know what that would be measurements but it's not very thick you're rolling it out fairly thin um, it's thicker than a pencil but still all right so you've got that and that's just literally going to get chippy choppied up as well and I'm kind of just going to do it at chippy choppy angles <laughs> chippy choppy angles oh dear and I probably won't even need all of this to be honest it's probably too much but you can see I'm just cutting little pieces off like that and that's all going to get thrown into the mix as well And I'm thinking that's probably enough so there is a little bit left over so obviously either make less or keep it to one side and we'll do something with the scraps all right so there are all my little pieces already chopped up so essentially it is chippy choppy but it's just a little bit more involved than just you know straight up chopping and that's that now these are all sticking together and particularly as it's sewn it it's extra sticky and I didn't leach it should have but I didn't so I'm going to get my pearl mica powder and I'm going to throw that into the lagoon the violets and the um, mix of fire red and yellow and I think I'll go with the green with the white mica powder as well. I'm just throwing a little bit of that into each pile. But then the other two piles, I'm going to add the gold mica powder. I've noticed in a lot of this um, colourful sea jasper, sediment sea jasper as it's called, there's um, some nice gold veining. So 
I'm going to be quite generous with the gold. Alright, so I've done two piles with gold. It doesn't really matter which colours you do with which, I guess, but that's just the way I did it. And I'm just going to give it a toss in the powder. Each pile gets tossed into the powder. Now this is where I come back and chop again because it does get stuck together. Bearing in mind that I don't want the pieces too, too small. It doesn't matter if there's a couple of tinier pieces, but for the most part, I'm trying to keep them fairly chunky. I mean, they're not huge pieces. Give that another tumble. Make sure it's nice and coated. It's a bit stuck again there. I'm just going to chop that. Alright, so that's pile number one. Pile number two. Just trying to separate them a little bit. Just toss it in the powder again. And then chop through a little bit to try and separate some of those chunks. And then toss in the powder again. And that's pile number two. Pile number three. I'll just do all this on camera now, guys. Whoops. Chop, but not too much. I don't want to lose that um, gradient, really, if I can help it. There's not anything really precise about this technique, it's just about getting the colours you want and having fun. Okay, next pile then, using the white powder. Again, just break it up a little bit, give it a little toss. So, I don't know whether... I don't think I mentioned this actually, in fact I know I didn't. I mentioned it in my group but I haven't mentioned it in any of my tutorials. But um, my hubby, being amazing, has said that he wants to finish the basement, i.e. renovate it, get it looking nice because currently it's, it's just a basement, um, you know, exposed brick and all that. And that's where I do all my recording. Now, he's got me kitted out really nice. I've got shelves and a bench and everything that I need. But he wants to renovate the, base, renovate the basement. And he's going to build me a proper craft room. I'm so excited. It's going to have walls. Actual walls. Because it's going to put drywall up and a ceiling and all the rest of it. So I, I can't wait. It's not going to be... Um, just yet it's going to be this year but probably late summer is going to start work on that so he's going to renovate the whole basement but he's going to make sure he gets my craft room finished i'm so excited guys i can't wait all new tiled flooring nice lights in the ceiling and all that kind of thing new um furniture you know bench and desk and whatnot so I just thought I'd share with you. I can't wait. Unfortunately, I've got to wait a little bit longer, but um, yeah, he's going to be doing that soon. So, and I will sh I will share pictures with you when it's been completed. So you might have to wait. Well, you will have to wait. But there you go. All right. So all my all my um chunks are nicely coated with mica powder and now it's just a case of throwing it all together guys a typical chip chippy chop you could be more strategic in how you placed which color where but i'm not going to i made this the other day and it looks gorgeous just you know randomly thrown together um it doesn't work that way with some stones you have to be more strategic with where you place them so like the blue would be next to the purple and you don't get them too mixed up but with this one you can mix it up 
All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it all together. One big colourful pile. Colours of the rainbow. Should probably just call it rainbow jasper. I think I think some some places do, or some people do call it that. But um, anyway, I'm rambling. Next thing, then, you got your nice colourful chunks. I'm going to take my gloves off now. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave them on. Change my mind. And I'm just going to throw in quite a lot of the metal leaf. Um, it's difficult to say how much, obviously, but, you know, just gauge it as best you can. It's not like mega amounts, but a fair amount. So that's the silver. And then I also want some copper. So I've got my copper leaf. And I haven't got much left. But I've got enough of this, so that's cool. Maybe not as much of the copper as the silver, but you know, a decent a decent sprinkle. Okay. Give that a quick tumble. Those colours just look so nice. They look so pearly and shiny. And then last but not least, your translucent liquid clay. I'm using the Cernit gel, but you can use any. I would recommend that you use a whiter translucent for this technique, guys, um, like Cernit or even Pardo, to get that nice translucent clarity with the stone. So I'm just drizzling this all over. This looks good enough to eat, actually. <laughs> and, of course, you just mix it all together. Now, I'm contemplating whether to do an extra step because I noticed with a lot of these um, sea sediment jaspers, in areas of the stone, there's some quite heavy veining, but that would mean making the block and then cutting slices and adding more metal leaf in more condensed areas. I'm still contemplating, so while I put this together in a block, I'm going to think about it. Because to be honest, it gets on my nerves doing that. <laughs> it's just so fiddly. Um, I'm not sure whether to or not, guys. I didn't on my last batch that I did, and it does look really good. But I guess it would look a little more authentic with that heavier vein in just in certain places. Actually, you know what? I'm going to. So once you've formed your block, now this next step is optional. I am going to do it just because I feel like I should. So I'm just wiping my desk down. And I am going to take my gloves off now. Because you know I hate working with them on. Alright, so I've decided I am going to do a little bit more heavy, heavier veining in this. But I'm not going to do loads of cuts, just a few. Just to give it a heavier veined look. Um, so I'm going to need that and I'm going to need that again. And I'm just going to do a few. Ooh, it looks so yummy on the inside. I'm just going to do a few. So you know the score. You've seen me do this before. Cut a little section off. Put liquid clay on either side of the cut. And then get your copper leaf. You could even use gold. Just to and just kind of cram it in there, and it just gives it extra veining. And it's time consuming, I find it a little bit boring doing this, but it does add an extra something to the piece. Stick it back together where you cut it as best you can, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then 
do as many cuts as you want so I'm going to do a few more but I'm not going to do it on camera so I'm going to put the liquid clay again on either side of the cut um, put the copper leaf on stick it back together and then probably do you know a few more cut cuts you can go in all different directions it doesn't have to be in straight lines all right so I'm going to go and do a few more cuts off camera and I'll be okay, back okay guys I actually ran out of copper leaf so I only ended up doing I think like four cuts but you could do as many of those as you wanted like I say some of the stones obviously depending on how they're cut etc they're, they're going to have more um, veining on them I think that's what the sediment bit is where it's like veining almost over the top of the stone but I'm just obviously giving the impression of that by adding those extra lines of metal leaf in there so when you've got your block all nicely formed and stuck together it's time to slice and you can see where I've put the extra it's kind of splitting open a little bit but it will eventually stick together all right so I've got my block ready and this is sewn it and it's extra sticky so I'm going to cut out all my slices um, And then I'm actually going to leach it before I use my cutters on it because it's extremely sticky and I know this is all going to squelch on me when I cut through, but it's fine. See, it's just mega soft. I could go and put it in the fridge before anybody tells me that. I do know um, it actually doesn't do that much because... As soon as you start playing with it again, it just it just warms up so quickly. It really needs a good leech. I suppose I could just let it stand for a bit before I cut into it again. But, you know, I'm impatient. So I'm just stacking it all together like this for now. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter if it gets a little bit disformed anyway. We're making a faux stone. It's random. It's a surprise in every cut. Alright, so I've just put my little pieces together. I'm going to give it a quick roll. I'm going to give it a quick roll one way. And a quick roll the other way and then I'm going to pass it through my pasta machine on the thickest setting which is a zero in my case actually before I do that I'm just going to give it a quick clean with some rubbing alcohol get some of that excess gunk off it so I've just got some isopropyl alcohol and a wet wipe and I'm just giving it a quick clean. Okay, so that's one side. Might as well clean the other. Give it a quick smush if it's like coming apart in places. That's where the extra gold leaf is. All right, so I'm going to go and pass this through my pasta machine on the thickest setting, just one way. And don't panic if it does this. Okay, now before I cut my pieces, I am going to let it leach for a little bit just to dry it out a bit because it's too sticky and I know if I try to cut through with my cutters and then lift the piece it's it's going to get misshapen so and all you do to leach something is just to get the ex excess moisture so to speak out of the clay just place your clay on some paper on the bottom and some on the top and just let it sit. Now, sewn it dries out fairly quickly, so you don't want to leave it too long. I'm probably going to leave it for three minutes 
check it again and see if it needs a little bit longer. When it's leached, I'll be back. I've let this sit for a few minutes, like four or five minutes, that's all. It probably could do with a little bit longer, but I'm getting impatient and I just want to get this done. It just looks so beautiful. Wait till it's baked. All right, so I've got my slab ready and I've got my cutters of choice. Now I've got some new ones in Ojoy Creations shop, some new cutters available. And, and also this heart one which has been there for a while and I'll just show you a few others that she's got currently in her shop as well and I absolutely love these I'm not going to use these on this one because I don't want to cut too too much away but they're just so cool really cool shapes I really like them and then this one as well and they're they look really nice for faux stones I just don't want to do it on this particular one um, and then there's this this one too which I really like. Anyway, you get the idea. There's a whole load of new cutters on Ojoy Creations. Some of them are Clay Boutique custom ones like these. I think that one is as well. I can't quite remember, but you'll find them. They're all there. All right, so I've got my slab. I'm just going to get a wet wipe and let's go with this. This one first. I love this shape. And I'm just hoping the clay isn't as sticky as it was. Find a place that looks good to you and cut it out. Push down. I always like to give it a little bit of a wiggle this way and this way. Make sure it's gone all the way through. Lift it up and that's the first one cut. That hasn't got a lot of the extra gold veining on it, but I'm not bothered. All right, let's try this one then. Let's get a little bit more of that gold veining on this one. Like I say, I only did, a, you can see where it is. I only did a little bit. Um, it's optional in my opinion. In reality, some have more of that condensed veining than others. See, I'm saying the word condensed again. <laughs> you know what I mean. Let's not get into that discussion again. Um, do I want to do some earrings? Would these look good as earrings, do you think? I don't know. You see, I don't wear earrings other than um, big silver hoops. And that's only become a recent thing as well. Because I, I didn't wear earrings for the longest time. I find that the only thing that really suits me are the big silver hoops. So that's what I wear. I don't really wear anything else. So I don't really know what looks good for earrings, to be honest. Um, I think we'll just stick with pendants then. Because I just it's just easier for me. You can make earrings if you want to. Although I think that would look pretty cool as a pendant. So let me see. Let's go here. So you can see out of a two ounce block, approximately, I mean, I didn't weigh it obviously, but it's close to a two ounce block. You're going to get quite a lot of pieces. Oh, that looks scrumptious. I don't want to. I love this bit here. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't decide now. And it's hard to see with the camera in front of me, as you know. So I'm just going to wing it and hope for the best. And cut it out there. Alright. Still got quite a bit left. Do I want this one or not? Don't know. Let me have a think. Mm, I'm going to go with my triangular one, actually. I really like this shape. It's one of my favourites. So why not? It's just knowing where to cut. Hmm. Let's go a little bit further down. Make sure that's not touching the other one. And give that one a cut as well. And we've still got a biggish, biggish area there. So, hmm, don't know what to do for that one. Yes, I do. Let's make a heart one. So, I'm, obviously, I've grabbed some other cutters as well, but they're all Ojoy Creation cutters. 
Okay, so that's all of those cut out. Obviously there's some left over of the slab. But I'm going to extend this video a little bit longer and show you what I do when I've got all this chippy choppy scrap left over. You can make some really nice pieces from it. So I'm just tearing it all off and I'm just lumping it together like so. And I'm really hoping these lift off the tile. I suppose I could have cut them straight on a tile that I was going to bake in the oven but I really don't like baking on tiles because they leave shiny spots unless I was going to add glitter into the resin in which case it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't see it but so I'm gently lifting these and hoping and praying they're not too squidgy not too bad so there's that one I'm just going to press it down gently on the card so it's nice and flat not the card the paper let's get this other one see I'm scared to touch it too much in case it's real squidgy but it's actually not too bad that leaching did help it somewhat there's that one and this one grab some more paper they just look so nice so colourful that one got a bit distorted I'm just going to try and gently push it back into shape there's a little bit sticking on that one let me just deal with these two first before I mess around with that one get these on the paper okay good okay this one got a little misshapen so I'm just going to try and fix that nothing major alright so they're the pieces and they, they look scrummy I'm going to give them a quick clean as usual with some rubbing alcohol and a wet wipe just making sure they're on the paper nice as well I'm not worried about any crumbly edges at this point because I, I always sand my edges so I'm just going to straighten this one up again a little bit All right, so that's those three. And then obviously there's these three. And you can see this one's got more of the copper leaf oozed out on it, which, you know, is good. I swear I added the extra copper leaf. All right, so these are ready to go in the oven and they will be baked for an hour on CERN it's temperature of 265 but I thought I'd extend this video and just show you what I do look at all this leftover from the chippy choppy I just literally take it I'm not going to mix it up too much I'm just scrunching it together and then just giving it a quick roll like this and I'm just going to grab another little chunk of um translucent and put that there now there's also this but I don't know whether I want to add this or not I don't think I'm going to I'm going to leave that out I'm just going to use what was left here and then um, another chunk of trans and I'm just going to place it on top like that and I'm just going to roll it together like so and I'm going to chop just random chops nice chunky pieces like so and then I'm going to grab my gold I thought um, some gold would look nice in this gold mica powder so I've got some gold mica powder and I'm just gonna fairly liberally sprinkle that over don't have to use gold you could use white you could use silver blue whatever color you wanted and the usual so this is 
chip, chippy choppy chippy choppy <laughs> not quite chippy chop not quite chippy choppy on steroids but it's you know chippy choppy in the chippy choppy get rid of some of that that was a bit too much all right so when you've got it coated go back in and just cut some more and when I did this the other day it actually looked like another stone and um, I can't remember the name of it but um, I did a one of those Google search things where you, you click the camera on the Google thingy and press which picture that you want it to search and it came up with um, a couple of different stones actually that it looked like so you know this is almost like a twofer I couldn't give you the name of the stone let's just say another faux stone um, yeah so and I think I'm good with the chop all right that's all I do guys now with other leftover what I've done is I've done what I showed you and then I kind of twist it and fold it over twist fold over that kind of thing but I just thought I'd do a, a quick chop into this rather than messing it with it for too long a little bit more liquid translucent clay just to help it stick because that mica powder is now on there I'm not going to add any further gold or uh, uh, so what am I talking about? Silver leaf or copper leaf. I'm not going to add any more metal leaf, in other words. And I'm just going to go and put my teeth back in. Right, so when you've done that, just standard chippy choppy procedure. And mush it together. Form it into a block. And that's it. You've rescued your chippy choppy. So just form into a block as usual. And there we go. That's that. So let's see what this looks like. Sorry guys, I just knocked the camera. Oops. Alright, so usual thing, I'm just going to take a slice of this and that's what you've got. And adding that extra translucent, you've got some lovely big chunks of it in there. And I personally think it looks very pretty. So I'm just going to do the usual thing. Cut it into slices, piece it together just randomly. my hands a quick wipe because uh, they're all sticky and gold all right let's give it a quick roll I'm going to pass this through my pasta machine on the thickest setting again and cut some pieces from it simple as that so you've got a two for one today guys kinda I think um, some people comment that um, I waste I waste my clay. No, I don't because this is what I do. I just don't show you. It's like people are so quick to jump on you over every little thing. So like, how do you know I waste my clay? Just because I didn't show it on camera doesn't mean I didn't do something with it. Now does it? Right. Okay, so we've got that. I'm just going to give it a roll just to make sure it's stuck on my tile nice and good. And I think I am going to use some of those other cutters that I showed you because I don't mind as much with some of the centres being cut away. I just wanted to keep those other pieces, you know, without anything cut away on them, to be honest with you. So let's have a look. I really like that one. Oh, I like all of them, to be fair. Um, where did that other one go? 
and I really, 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 really like this one. It's almost got like a cat's eye shape in the middle. Of course, you're going to get some cut away, but it's all good. Now, for these cutters, I found if you give it an extra wiggle, because these thin bits here can tend to um, stick to the clay and when you lift the cutter off the clay comes up with it what I found is if you give it an extra wiggle like really so you can see it actually moving the cutters actually moving that's actually making the clay underneath smaller than the shape so when you take the cutter away it's not going to lift the clay with it just a little tip um, I don't know now guys I think I'm just going to do another heart and that's all I'm going to do on camera just so you can see how pretty they look okay so I've still got all that left obviously I will use it but just for now um, I've got these two pieces now you're more than likely going to have some more left over again just do the same thing just chuck in a little bit more trans or something. I'm worried about this one. You see, this one's going to lose its shape. I knew it was going to do that. I'll see if I can save it. It might be a loss, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm. I don't know about this one. I think I might have to scrap that one. Yeah, that's too that's too misshapen. Oh well, that's a shame. <clears throat> Let me bring back this then. I'm sad about that because that would have looked pretty. Oh well. Um, hmm. Decisions, decisions. Let's just go with this one. I just wanted to do a couple so you could see. So I'm going with this cutter instead. I'll see if I can get a round one out of the stuff that's left. I perhaps rushed it a little bit. I'll see if I can get one without it breaking. Not breaking, but getting too distorted. Okay, alright guys, so we've got some multicoloured sediment sea jasper and then some pieces used with the leftover from that. Alright, so I'm going to go and bake these in the oven for an hour and I will be back. Alright guys, they're finished. They're resined front and back sanded real nice on the side so they're nice and smooth there's that piece i love it i just and i i'm really happy with how that purple came out as well so there's that one simple pinch bail leather cord and then cord cap ends and a simple little flower toggle for that one all these things are listed in my amazon store from the pinch bales the findings etc same with this one so pretty and the cord and a different toggle clasp the butterfly one which again is listed in my Amazon storefront so there's those two and then I'd, I haven't finished the other ones yet so I'll just show you as is so depending on where you cut as well I mean this has got a lot more of the bluey green in it and this has got you know the lighter green coming through they're all gorgeous. I just love them. And then this one too. I think this is probably my favourite actually. Actually I don't know. They, they're all so nice. But I just love this one with the purple showing through. And this has got some more of the purple showing through. So there's that one. And then this one went a bit wonky on me. <laughs> my triangle lost its triangular shape. But I'll still show you. It's quite pretty. So they're all the ones from the um, 
original stack and guys just to clarify it's imperial jasper that i'm doing not sea sediment jasper not that it makes that much difference they're all pretty close but i kept saying the wrong name probably because they are so very similar anyway and then this is a few that I did from the scrap, the leftover scraps. And here's one that I did. And I managed to do that round one with the really nice shape in the middle. I just love that. And I just added leather cord. This is an agate bead. These are listed. And then just the same thing. And I haven't put the toggle clasp on there yet. But there's that one. Pretty cool. Pretty cool looking from scrap. That's that one. And then just a couple more that I did from the scrap batch. It's a whole rainbow of colours in there. So pretty. All right, guys. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my faux imperial jasper tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.